Hi, welcome to my studio space. I'm Amanda, a mixed media artist. Come in. I've, I've been a mixed media artist for a number of years. I originally started out um, drawing, uh, using graphite and using acrylic and I've since gone on to expand to um, incorporate everything. I love to paint, I love to create art journals, I love to do book binding, I love to sculpt, I love to combine materials and in my sculptures I normally use um, fabric and I create my own paper clay so I use paper clay which actually is if you get the ingredients right it actually makes a really strong um, it, it's very strong and you could actually sculpt in it and carve in it um, so I use paper clay I recycle so I use fabrics um, some of the fabrics that I use are vintage fabrics and some of the materials I use. So I will take wood, I will take um, um, paper, cardboard, and you can incorporate all of those when you make the paper clay. And if you use cardboard, it can make a really strong, durable material. So I create sculptures. And the thing for me, it's about how we how we use the arts and creativity as a means to impact on our health and well-being or to make us well the arts have a very powerful way of impacting our lives whether you are somebody who is an artist who who creates um, who takes the materials or if you think of the arts across the board or whether you're somebody who will go into a museum or a gallery and look at um, a piece of art or that you enjoy in your home so I think that all of all of the people who interact with it on different levels get something from it so you might find say I guess people who say come to the Caribbean and buy the kind of the art that is, you know, seascapes, landscapes, um, uh, beach scenes, um, you're actually taking a piece of your holiday um, back home with you and it's, it's a memory. You look at it and you remember your time that you spent. So I think that kind of art has its place as well because people do want to, rem to a reminder and not just a, f a photograph, a, a painting, um, of a beach scene or a place where you've been is a much um, better reminder of your time in that country. So I've been in Barbados for five years, originally from the UK, parents from Jamaica and so we came here as a family and we, um, we wanted to come here but also be part of and make a contribution. So one of the things that I did when I first came was to, um, I connected with the Barbados Alzheimer's Association. So um, one of the things that I was doing in the UK was running art workshops in a dementia uh, specialist daycare centre. And so I ran the, the workshop for um, four years, three to four years and it was to really just to enable the participants to have a space where they could just feel relaxed and comfortable. So we had a range of art supplies, I had um, music that I would um, source from the era that they were from, it was, there were themes each month but each session they would come out with something complete. We'd have small groups who would do a series of sessions um, and then they'd rotate. And the people who took part in the sessions, they were able to then have their work displayed. And so it was a nice way for those people who hadn't um, been part of the sessions to actually see what 
that other people had been doing and so again you know they were looking at the artwork and then making their comment there would be talking points and um, the people who actually did the artwork I mean some of them didn't even remember that they did it but I think they got a sense of it was just like muscle memory that they had had something to do with it even though you know if you said oh what did you paint yesterday or last week they may not be able to remember but the fact that they had got involved in that activity was um, really beneficial and then one of the main things I did was to go around and look at um, how we can incorporate more creative activities in the day-to-day -day because the infrastructure for carers and the families are not necessarily there but you could give them tools to enable them to cope better in their situation so the use of arts in health is something that is really important for me important to be able to um, share with somebody how they can incorporate a simple activity in their life find five ten minutes even if that's all they have and do something creative that will help them with their health and well-being and help them um, feel good about themselves and one of the things that I do on my YouTube channel is called Arts and Wellness Cafe and it's just talking about different things. We have a word for the month or the week and I talk about different aspects of arts and health and I also run an arts and health network which helps to bring people together and, and showcase the work that people are doing. They can um, share the work that they've been doing as an organisation or an individual in terms of arts and health and within their community. And I also share information on um, art events, anything to do with the arts and health and the impact of the arts on, on health um, and that's the network. So I've you know done quite a lot in in that field and that's really what informs some of my work as an artist now as a mixed media artist now because I'm aware at how color um, textures and imagery can really impact on somebody not only the the viewer but also the person who's creating the art. So one of the things that I do is I teach online and I work with other artists and we come together with our different lessons and create courses. So I've been doing that now for five years and um, that's been a great way to connect with people. There's a lot of people who may be at the beginning of their art career, or not even an art career, but uh, uh, just rediscovering art for themselves. And one of the things that I do on my YouTube channel is to provide just tutorials or show how I would approach, say, drawing figures or... So I give them mini tutorials, reviews. Um, I've done interviews of artists artists who have not only been in the UK but in London, in Barbados as well so for quite a few of the exhibitions that I've attended and also the Caribbean Fine Art Fair which usually takes place once um, every year in March I would do interviews for that and so I've got quite a, a bank of um, artists who've I've, who I've interviewed and I've place those um, on a YouTube channel as well which is just about things that are in Barbados and sometimes you know some of the places that I would go so um, the other thing that is really important to me is the connection between the arts and nature and I love to incorporate some of the elements that can be found outside so I harvest my own wood, I grow my own cotton, I grow bananas. I've not yet extracted the fibres from those, but that's one of the things that I want to do. Eco dyeing, um, dyeing from um, avocado seeds and inks from the avocado seeds. So I've, I've done quite a bit of work on that. And 
um, it's really important to me that connection with nature and my creativity and I want there to be like a seamless loop. Yeah, the, th the thing that I've been doing uh, recently that I'm quite excited about is the stitching and the wall hangings and I love adding beading, I love adding stitching. They all just, I never thought I would, but um, I find it really therapeutic. So um, yeah, anything to do with stitching. I've learned quite a few uh, stitches, embroidery stitches. And so yeah, I combine that with the beading and um, materials and I bring them together and create different pieces. I also use sculpture. Um, in you know sculptured pieces in them faces and things like that and you can see in some of the pieces that I create that um, some of them actually do take quite a while and it's not something that you can rush and that's what I love about being a mixed media artist that I can take um, different materials and bring them together and see how they work tell the story because that's the other thing that's really important to me the story that we tell the story of our histories our history our ancestors and how far back you can go to way back when you know we created civilizations and culture and um, discovery and things around the world that we have contributed to and it's about remembering those stories and for me looking at the way even just the way that we use fabrics and if you look at some of the dyeing methods and the stitching methods and some of the African cloth and the symbols and the signs and bringing them all together and and um, looking at the meaning that they have the the way that a piece of fabric you know you can identify a piece of, piece of fabric from from the methods used in dyeing and that's amazing to me because there's so much of that that you know say growing up in England I knew nothing about but what really um, is attracting me to the fabric is the stories told and it, even going around my garden so looking at the clay pieces that I find each one of those has a story to tell the person who touched it the the um, enslaved person who had to carry the 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 I don't know the the bowl or the the carry water or whatever it was that they they those containers held um, and what their story was where they came from um, what village did they live in um, what were their dreams and aspirations and and that's something that i think it's important as creatives as a creative it's important for me to get that story out to communicate that and to show the strength that lies in our history not the history that we've been told but the history that has been hidden the history that had you know had been had, the, the, they had tried to wipe out the, the the oral history that's been handed down from generation to generation. And even looking in the way that when we look at quilts, and I think that's another thing that attracted me to, I started out wanted to create a quilt, but realized as I got into it that it was the art quilt and the actual messages that can be put in the quilts and when we think about the enslaved who would you know create these elaborate quilts that would warn or um, you know send messages or give messages to those who were trying to plan an escape or you know whatever so it's the way again the way that creativity the way that art helps us to communicate ideas, helps us to communicate our story, helps us to, um, I was gonna say embed an emotion, but the emotion that is that can be within 
the things that we have around us, the art that we see on the wall, the way that we can look at a painting and burst into tears because it fills us with so much emotion, the scenes that we can see in the art. Um, yeah, so it's very, it's very, um, I really, um, I'm really pleased to be an artist. I, I love being an artist. I love creating and I love um, just dipping into different things. And I use it not only as a, a way to communicate ideas, thoughts, um, imagination, uh, visions, but also as a healing tool. So I will have my, I have my creative practice. I, you know, do my little rituals. I like my <laughs> oil burner with scented oils. And um, the first part of the morning is just for me to dive into whatever material I want. There's no restrictions. It's whatever you feel like doing, that's what you're gonna do. So that then stops me feeling that, oh, I haven't had a chance to do this. You know, I've got other pieces of work that I need to do. Like, you know, I have to create um, art videos on a regular basis. So that's one thing. But just being able to sit down and play with supplies or work with my um, wood burner or work with leather or bring some fabric together. So I enable myself to do those things and that then I feel good and then I can get on with the other work or you know there might be a lot of um, admin work that needs to be done because that's still you know that's the business of art so you have to get on with that um, so I allow myself to do it so this is one of this is one of my favorite places to be in in my uh, garden which um, I'm building a food forest and I want to grow as many things on the land that I can um, and all the things that you know you sometimes we we import a lot of food and it's just like well what do we have here that we can grow and so that's the creative part of me coming out and um, looking at how I can um, use my artistic skills in um, in creating an environment outdoors as well as indoors that I can, you know, my creativity can soar. And so that has come by all the things that I plant. And as I said before, I've, I grow a lot of Moringa trees because the wood from the Moringa tree is really lovely to work with. I love cre creating some of these areas that it's like just a it is like a forest that's the, that's the feel i'm trying and to also get, the like levels the layers the canopies and, uh... i love spending time out here and i love spending time in my studio and you know just being surrounded by all these different plants is um lovely so thank you for thank you for joining me here I hope that's um, shed some light on uh, some of the ways in which I work and um, you've seen some of my art and um, do come and join me on my various platforms I'm all over social media so I'd love to connect with you take care for now